All right, everyone, welcome to the third episode of Cinemafia. I am one of your hosts, Lewis. To my left is... Andrew, hey. And on Andrew's left is Asher. Hello. And today we are going to be looking at the 2013 film The Counselor by... What director? Uh, directed by Ridley Scott um, and written and, uh, I believe, executive produced by Cormac McCarthy. Cormac McCarthy, famous for uh, such novels as Blood Meridian, uh, No Country for Old Men, also became a film. And, uh, uh, and The Road, right? And The Road, yeah. that's right. Uh, this was never a book uh, in the first place. It's just straight up became a film. Um, and I'll read you just a little overview just to help us get a... Just a quick one. Yeah, just, just a quick one. one. Mm-hmm. Keep it so, short. Oh, I just touched the microphone stand. That's really high quality stuff. Right, doesn't shut it down. <laughs> a Bentley driving Texas lawyer, Michael Fassbender, appears to have it all, including a beautiful fiance named Laura, Penelope Cruz. But his financial needs force him to become involved in an ill-advised drug deal. His partners in the venture include middleman Westray, Brad Pitt, shady nightclub owner Rainer, Javier Bardem, Malkina... Oh, sorry, and Malkina, Cameron Diaz, Reina's sociopathic lover. Unsurprisingly, the counselor's deal spirals out of control, placing both him and Laura in mortal danger. I screwed up the word mortal there. Mm. Add a little L. I don't, think, I don't think anyone would have noticed. <laughs> well, you know what they did. They're currently <laughs> think, writing there. I think everyone would have yeah. noticed. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll look, see you off the show. We'll pass, we'll pass the talking job over to someone who is a really elegant and eloquent. Let's oh, go over yeah. to Andrew. Andrew is going to explain oh the Mafia concept of our show. Yes, once again, if this is the first time that you're tuning in to an episode of Cinemafia, I'm first just First of all, welcome. <laughs> I'm just yeah, gonna, Andrew. Oh shit! <laughs> I'm just going to quickly explain how Cinemafia goes. So we've all just seen a film uh, for the first time. I'd like to say, uh, though, Asha has seen it before, far in the past, I assume. Though, don't worry. Uh, he swears that he can still play this game normally. We'll see about that. Furthermore, uh, regardless, sorry, the game starts by us watching this film, having our thoughts and opinions about it. And then we go and one of us is assigned to be a Mafia member where we have to present a disingenuous opinion about the film while we're sort of reviewing it and talking about it. So that's essentially what's going to happen here. Uh, One of us three is a Mafia and we're going to be saying things that we didn't think true about the film. Oh man, words are hard. (laughs) I don't know how to describe this properly. Basically, we don't know who it is. We dealt out cards. Uh, The card was a a Yu-Gi-Oh card, a specific Yu-Gi-Oh card. uh, Today's episode, the cards were from Yu-Gi-Oh and the card that defined who the Mafia was, was I believe it was called Gravekeeper's Spy. So um, Maybe the Mafia could confirm what that was. Yeah. Any of the Mafia, <laughs> whoever got that card, do they want to say what it was? I'm not the Mafia, so I can never confirm. I can't card. remember it, and you know, if I checked, it wouldn't help. You can't remember because you are the Mafia? Uh, oh, we've got him. Uh, yeah, we got him, we boys. Got him. Uh, regardless, <laughs> uh, the most important thing to note is that uh, we're trying to find out who the Mafia is. We're trying to find out uh, who's lying about their opinion, and then we all vote at the end. And if the villagers win, uh, then the villagers win. They know who the mafia was, and he's lynched. But That's if right. the mafia manages to split the vote of the other two villagers, then uh, he gets away with it, and he wins the episode. We don't really have any prizes, so there's no real stakes, but we like to have fun. That's the main thing. Yeah, yeah I try to have fun. If you'd like to watch this episode of Cinemafia while knowing who that mafia is, then please have a look at this following link. tinyurl.com forward slash cinemafia spoilers, all one word. That is tinyurl.com forward slash Cinemafia spoilers. Thanks for listening. Okay, so would the Mafia like to go first? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, guys. But seriously, who would like to go first? Lewis, maybe you could go first. Give it a rating, right? So we're going to okay. go around. Yeah. Give it a Jeez, basic I rating. A, uh, my rating for this film. I genuinely thought this was a bad film. I'm giving this a four out of ten. And in the past few episodes, I've given like a really long sort of spiel about my opinions on the film. But here, I think I can really easily summarize it. This film was incredibly pretentious. Uh, there was way too much talking as opposed to like, I don't need action, but I do need some sort of acting. And um, there are so many characters, the main characters we see, the, the five characters, where we have the counselor, Raina, Wes Ray, Malkina, and Laura. Um, they're all introduced, they're all meant to be big, but then they get killed off. Like they don't really get any respect. There are constantly being minor characters introduced who are just, um, I guess, what speaking devices for the film to get across their very you know forced film um themes like we've got like a random um guy playing pool who's just spouting all this ideology um look i just didn't enjoy this film at all that's like my my brief little take yeah thank you for your brief rating out of 10 (laughs) (laughs) which you gave and then talked about the film that's fine this is what we're doing now that's valid Um, that was just my little sentence on the film yeah yeah you didn't take breaths all right (laughs) i don't do that yeah no breathing uh so if i'm going next then i will state that 
I didn't like this film either. Mm. I would rate it 3.5 Ooh. out of 10. Really disappointing film in many respects. I think I found a brother over here. Uh, I thought that it was slow. There were many unnecessary scenes and it was telling a story that has been told many times before. It wasn't particularly unique or moving. Fair enough. Asha. Um, I, I agree, basically, but I'd rate it a little bit higher. I'd rate it 5 out of 10 mm. because I think it had some really, uh, really good moments. Some specific inter like specific relationships with characters I got quite invested in. Um, some of the cinematography I enjoyed. Well, most of the cinematography I enjoyed. Actually, I didn't enjoy particular parts when things were like close to the lens and we just moved out of the way to reveal stuff. That just I didn't like that. But the mm. rest of it, great. I love the color palette. Um, but like you guys said, it seemed to not really be doing anything uh, unique. It had just said you know drugs, crime. And snuff films are bad mm. because of, you know, killable reasons. Because All of these morals. People, yeah. yeah <laughs> they die. Um, yeah. So your, so your rating was a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10. I think this might be the first time that we've reviewed a film and we've all given a different rating, I think. Well, actually, no. no. Maybe we did on the first episode. And the second one. Okay. Yep. No, in the, in the second one, we uh, I think Andrew and I both gave it a 5 out of 10. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So that yeah. we all, none of us actually agree with one another. Mm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was a five out of 10. Lewis, you were a what again? A four out of 10. And you were? 3.5. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we're pretty smart. I think yeah. we just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not quite done yet because one of us is lying. Yeah. Yeah. One of us liked the film. Yeah. Honestly. That sick fuck. Yeah. Or, or one of or us not. thought that it was an all right film. Uh, uh, oh, that's yep. true. That's yeah. True. You could you could have thought this was an all right film, or you could have thought it was one of the worst films. It's possible. Ever. Some yeah. I could one of you have really rated it one star, re, um, one out of ten. Realistically, I don't think Lewis would rate it yeah. one out of ten. I, don't I think, think you could have rated, rated that uh, five. I don't think. I don't think any of okay. you would have rated it one or two because it did have at least a few things yeah. going for it. I feel like with a baseline of like major com- like major film companies, it's like, okay, you're not going to see a one out of 10 because there's going to be yeah. at least a few things that impress you, you know? Like it wasn't um like the cinematography, I didn't think it was fantastic, but it's not like it was bad, you know? It's not mm-hmm. like a guy's got his you know thumb over the lens. Like that's the sort of film where it's like, <laughs> okay, this is a one out of 10. So what was that sound? Was that someone moving their feet on the ground? No, that, I was, I mean, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I, I would also like to blame Andrew as he was about to blame himself. Yeah, Andrew, that was you. You made a noise, and because of that, I'm sure many listeners are turning off right now. Mm. It's not because we haven't really said much. Yeah. Well, all. look, let, let's get on with the show. Um, we've already given our ratings and our brief opinions. Who would like to open up and go, I guess, more in depth of their analysis of this film? Well, I don't know, analysis, but a bit of a gripe. I didn't really understand what the scheme was, like, with, yep. with the counsellor and being involved um, with Raina, the... the uh, fast talking uh, yep. strange uh, guy who is in charge of drugs and criminality and had a you know far too intelligent and equally dangerous uh, girlfriend that was my whole issue with the film there's so much talking it's so it's so much of people meeting in a location getting a drink sitting down someone spouting some very pretentious ideology you know like oh you know man isn't meant to do this you know there's only one thing that matters in life it's money or oh, greed blah 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 but we don't actually see like um we don't really see like um the drugs being produced like actually being smuggled we see little scenes but it's well, mostly just the people involved talking about it and then going to another scene to talk about it in its defense we do see the smuggling of the drugs that yes is but it's from thing. all these minor characters we don't see the main characters I, really involved in this stuff. that's actually one thing i did like was the smuggling of the drugs how it changed hands and, and that's not necessarily like a ooh clever it's just like that's just kind of potentially what happens if all of these people have interests in you know getting these drugs that it just this this truck changes hands of so many people i just found that kind of interesting following the truck but you're right like sitting down having uh like martinis uh, talking about how how women are, are dangerous and all this like relatively insubstantive stuff there was so many unnecessary scenes. Yep. There were yep. so many. Uh, it was ridiculous. The scene at the start went on for too long and its only purpose was to show how much he loved her. Yep. Uh, that could have been expressed by him looking at a photo and touching it yep. uh, in five seconds rather than the, this three minute long sex scene. Yep. That uh, was really awkward. I'd say it was more than that. And But, I, oh man, this is making me look real bad because I'm. you guys are criticizing these, these things and I'm like defending it. But yeah. like... That and now he's trying to lampshade it. He's trying to defend himself because I mean, he realizes not nah, the that mafia. It's too early. It's too early. That that I've seen the sex scene. It was it was uncomfortable to watch, right? Yes, because, it was. And I think that's that's not too bad. Like 
obviously <laughs> sex films... should make us uncomfortable <laughs> no no like if you're literally watching two people intimately uh have sex you shouldn't really feel comfortable uh Unless that's your thing, in which um, yeah. case you should <laughs> seek help God. and turn yourself in. But but basically, a lot of films get this, you know, the strange idea of sex with a little bit of music playing and, like, everyone has their bra on all the time, which actually she did have her bra on. Mm. But regardless, it wasn't like a clean, crisp, stereotypical sex scene. It was actually kind of interesting and uncomfortable. So I felt like I was actually watching... Um, these two people being intimate. <laughs> okay. Um, do you think it was uncomfortable in the sense about what he was saying to her? It was because it. Well, they're, like they're he, di- was, he was. He was. He right. was essentially asking, like, talk dirty to me in yeah. so many words. Yeah, yeah. But like, I think that's how couples would actually do it, where they're like, "Hey, talk dirty." It's like, yeah. I want you to uh, be uh, within me. Yeah. Oh, and it's <laughs> like, uh, yep, you just said that. Yep. But they didn't do it in such a goofy, yeah, sort of, uh, I, rom-com way. It yeah. was. It was just kind of earnest Hmm. but it made me uncomfortable i'll say that one thing that was like the one beacon of light in this film was it was um the guy i believe rainer the the orange man um (laughs) orange man yeah i i mostly referred to him in my notes as the jersey shore guy because you know he's he's overly tanned like fake tan his hair's like you know all the way up um you know got like you know obviously like a bit of an accent has has parties every day yep yep he was entertaining just because you know you got the accent he's um you know like telling all these random stories but I guess he he felt out of place because he was he was almost like the comic relief in a sense. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Random stories that triggered me. For, yeah, uh, okay. because the film comprised of a lot of random stories yes. from characters. They would just tell stories, and they were relatively pointless, yep. other than to show that that character is a hedon mm. or that character um, is dangerous or yep. that character is questionable morally that sort of thing there were just so many stories that they would recount to one another why wouldn't they just show it to us yeah, normally I thought, why wouldn't they have a mm. scene where we could learn that rather than the characters telling us about it i oh, thought that all those little stories were meant to be the film trying to flesh out their ideas like at the start we had the diamond seller and he's like i'm going to randomly tell you a story yep. about the jewish culture and traditions and a some like random story about that his own so life point. it's so like ham-fisted. and then uh, and that idea do you guys think that idea of culture and tradition was at all developed in this film because i thought okay this film's no. including this bit here nope. because they're no. going to do something but they're going to be like oh yeah this film is going to build on the idea of you know loyalty and blah blah and blah. diamonds weren't even that important yep yeah, like no, uh, just a vehicle. It, and the main thing, I mean, the only time where diamonds could have been important was when um, Malkia, uh, she was investigating the diamond that yep. was given um, to her by her friend at the time, who had just Laura. been proposed to Laura. That was I found really and, uncomfortable. And yes. she was like looking at the diamond and judging it, and that was supposed to be like, okay, she doesn't have much of an eye for humanity. There was uh, another thing that weirded but, me out. But she got that it actually so right. insignificant. She was actually right about the yeah, diamond. She no, got yeah, the, she, um, I mean, that Asher, was, the Asher, it's not the same spelling as my name. It's yeah. A-S-S-C-H-E-R cut okay. of the diamond. She got the, basically the carrot range mm. and the, she didn't get the color range. She got that wrong. She got one off. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I found that kind of interesting. Yeah. She had totally unaware of this, this, or maybe she was aware, making this woman really uncomfortable, right? Yep. Just taking her ring, like kind of clumsily at a pool of, any, of all places, yep. right? We're just going to fall away. And then she's just like, oh yeah, this is a diamond, blah, blah, blah. These are the things. I understand diamonds. Yeah. Uh, you're made of flesh with. and you can die. Yep. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Two things that I really didn't like. First of all, there was the random inclusion of Laura being like, oh yeah, she's lesbian. Like where Raina and the mm. counselor are talking just randomly throws that out. And that really only gets minor development when um, Cameron Diaz's character, Malkina, is like touching her and sort of flirting with her. And then later on when Laura calls her and was like, oh, I had a dream about you. But the, uh, apart from yeah. that, they go their separate ways. That's It's just a random little thing they throw in there. And also... At first, I really liked Cameron Diaz's character. I, I, I feel weird calling her Malkina. It's such a fucking weird name. Can yeah. I just call her Cameron? You know, we're on uh, first name basis. You can, I mean, you could say Diaz's character yeah. if you wanted. Um, Diaz, she's played off as this real, like, you know, cool, calm, collected person. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to um, church. I'm going to, you know, like, um, not cuss out, but, you know, like, she criticize. Was, she was sociopathic. Yeah, yeah she's like, I'm going to, you know, like, make this priest feel bad for not doing his job. Oh, I'm going to go to this guy. He's going to give me money. But if he's going to get in trouble, I'm going to leave. It was real try hard at, like, having her be, like, you know, all strong and independent. And, you know, she's going through all this, like, chaos in her life. We don't even really know what her role is. Like, was she literally just, she, like... She's just an independent person who found an opportunity yeah. to score big money. Yeah, yeah. she found uh, her boyfriend. She met this guy, knew that he was going to be involved in a deal... Uh, became involved with him, mm. 
in- intimately for a very long time. She was building with this for yeah. a very long time, waiting for this opportunity. I guess I just and found then she her, hijacked it. Yeah, I guess I just found yeah. her character very off-putting because she's the one who's like, all, as I said, she's the one that's always calm. Like she's the one that doesn't get in trouble, and she's like always like on top of the situation. And I guess I just found that character very off-putting, so I couldn't really connect with her being the one who basically gets off scot-free. Like of all the major characters, she's the one who gets away with everything. Yeah, everyone it, else either dies or gets fucked over. In the end, this could be a story about like the wreckage around what she's you know doing you know with her life and how people suffer because of what she's doing because at the end she's meeting uh, another uh you know wealthy uh young morally suspect person. morally sus- suspect man yeah. who uh, she's talking about diamonds and you know uh, moving money yeah and he's saying it's gonna be difficult to move this money but diamonds, she's like yeah this will be fun. This will be fine. Yeah, uh, the, the end scene. Die. The end scene with her and that guy at mm-hmm. the um at with dinner. the Assassin's Creed hood. Yeah, that was another thing that sort of annoyed me. Where like she's just spouting off all these pretentious lines, you know, like oh yeah, I just really love the thrill of watching my cats yeah, go out. The it's thrill just, of the hunt. Yeah, I just love seeing the violence, and it's like okay, mm. the idea is oh she loves the violence here, and that relates to her putting herself in this lifestyle where she's around all these dangerous people. And it just death it just feels so meaningless, vapid, you know. Death yeah. is meaningless, sort of thing. In terms of pretentious uh, monologues, though, one which I actually kind of liked, which was arguably the most pretentious, was that phone call. Um, I liked the, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, I, the, with the guy playing pool? The guy playing pool. I, I really liked that. I fucking hated that. No I thought way. it might be that. Yeah. Mafia. So, <laughs> exactly. But, no, I mean, I can, I, I'm kind of in both camps. I, um, I'm, I'm happy to explain I love that go. scene. I love... All right, sorry. He was just talking about, right, a basic idea of grief and... Uh, you're kind of baiting him like, you know, oh, would you, how, pre- how prepared are you to, you know, take her place and how much grief do you feel? And he, he's like, oh my God, yeah, totes, I would do it, which is not how he sounded. He was yeah, actually yeah. <laughs> you know, better than <laughs> he that. Was, he was crying yeah, uh, yeah. quite a lot and, because and, he was realizing the gravity of the situation. And then he, was he just pulls it away in. from him. It's like, no, see, your grief doesn't matter. Uh, and the reality is this is happening. Go move on. Get a yacht. Go away. Drink wine. This is what we do. Your wife is never coming back. <laughs> yeah. You see, to me, that just comes off as very basic, like life advice, where it's like, you know, you need to get over this grief, blah blah blah. And the my main issue was that this guy, we were introduced to this character on the on the end of the phone who's playing pool while talking to the counselor. We're introduced to him like two minutes ago, and now I'm suddenly meant to take him seriously as someone who's apparently yep. his friend, but we don't we don't get to see the relation totally. between them. We don't and know then, who he was exactly. And then he's saying he's giving him all this life advice, and also the guy, um, the counselor, he has like three breakdowns, and. I, I guess my issue with them was they felt overly comical. And I know the idea that they're trying to go across is that he's losing all control of his body. That's why he's basically like weeping like a little girl. But I think there is a good way to have a breakdown. Like I think back to um, the mother, Sarah, in Requiem for a Dream. That breakdown that she had, that was very powerful. Like I'm thinking about okay. the first one. It as was opposed like a to, controlled sort of yes, breakdown. Yes, like I could, it felt more realistic where it's like, this is someone who's trying to keep it together, but yep. they can't hold back. Okay. But they're falling apart. But here, it was just the guy just scrunching up his face as much as he could, letting yeah. out these sissy little moans. And like, okay, <laughs> maybe if I went through what this guy went <laughs> yeah, through, I mean, I, I'd, I'd yeah. go through that. I but I guess I just, criticism, couldn't, I just couldn't suspend my disbelief for that. That is some bullshit criticism right there. That, How? He, he, I can't believe you're just like, you know, he's... He's crying like a little girl. His 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 while his wife, his fiance rather, um, is most likely being tortured to death or, or dead at this very moment. Well, you have to remember that's know? another issue I had. They didn't really play up his idea of grief. They they really extended it because what he's meant to be meeting her at the airport or at some no, place after. Hotel. Okay, so he doesn't meet her. He's we don't really see him freaking out. We see him being like to the guy rather calmly. Oh, hey, I'm I'm looking uh, for you know I, I need to go check my phone at the hotel see if there's any missed calls. I feel like this guy he loved he supposedly loves this woman. You know he's he's putting him, his, himself on the line for her, and now he knows that she's not here. He has to think that something's happened to her. I feel like we should have seen the freak out way earlier. Well, we see it we see it very delayed, and that just felt really like off to me. He's no. trying to he's trying to keep calm, yeah. but eventually it becomes too much. For but him. I didn't see yeah. any evidence of him trying to keep calm i saw someone who was just genuinely calm seemed almost nonchalant like i feel when someone has like someone that you love and you think that something serious has happened and it's basically your fault i would have liked a few more like i don't know close-ups of his hands sort of moving or something do you think that's the actor's fault or the director's fault because there's a case for both i thought the guy was fine as an actor sort of playing like the suave smart ass that he was but when he was getting dramatic and emotional um i just didn't connect with him you know that's just one of those human things like asher says oh you know that's a bullshit criticism sometimes it's literally just like an emotional thing where it's like okay i can't connect with this person you know i i see that they're conveying this emotion but it just i just don't connect with them on that level okay 
That, that's basically well, my point. Well, we've got ourselves a Melkia over here. <laughs> Melkina. Mm-hmm. Melkina. Melkina. Yeah. Let's just change her name to Melkor so that us nerds over here can uh, remember her name. Lord of the name. Rings. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's the evil one, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so we could move on uh, to another sort of aspect. Uh, aspect. Aspect. How did you guys feel about the use of like uh, sound in this one? Um, I really... Oh, sorry, do you want to take over? Andrew? Yeah, talking about? okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I actually wrote a few notes about the music. Uh, I liked it. I like the music. It was very dramatic at the start. The opening piece of music was excellent. It had a nice guitar line, you know, just chilling along, setting the scene. You know, we thought it was just going to be a relatively chill movie, yeah. but it was quite dramatic. Um, and I sort of ignored the music the rest of the way through, except during when the music was when um, on the phone. So yep. the scene that you were talking about, yeah. uh, there was like some really sad sounding strings because shit was getting real. You know, mm. it was like, now you really have to understand the gravity of your situation. And the music was like, I don't know, it was like a Daggio for strings or something. No, nah, not quite that. But it was, He's classically trained, <laughs> yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't know too much what to say about the sound. I mean, there were some dramatic horns whenever, mm. you know, it would be like, Wah. Yeah. sometimes uh, mm-hmm. when, you know, things had happened. Yeah. And- when the when the action was like finally picking up, like um, when Brad Pitt's character, uh, West Ray, when he's like walking um, through like, you know, the public area and he oh, gets yeah. attacked. Rising tension. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> like those really moments good. where the, like the dramatic music, like I thought it was fine. You know, it's obviously building tension, but to me, it's just so unmemorable. Like I, I, I know at the time I felt like, oh, this is good at building atmosphere, but it's not like a, a memorable piece where i'm going to be like oh yeah i remember exactly how that sounded well, and i can't I, think of any particular I, songs that are going to stick in my head so i, don't I guess think it's, it's about an the song sticking in your head it's about the feeling of the scene because often if, if there's a soundtrack and it's executed um you know ex- exceptionally well you don't necessarily know that there is a soundtrack you just feel i, I totally something. disagree with that think think to like inception no, no, fantastic yeah, soundtrack that's different like ambient yeah. sound that's Obvi- what i'm saying what i'm talking about is exactly. o- obviously that's one extreme but i'm talking about just the sort of like low tension sort of sound where yeah that's what if i'm you saying weren't actually like a w- okay well that's just what i'm saying you it just was, don't it you was don't fine. like that sort of stuff that's well i'm not subtle. saying i don't like it i'm just saying it was fine but unremarkable Look, you know you're getting aggressive just <laughs> Andrew, do you understand what i'm talking about i understand thank you that's all i needed Okay. That's all I, I needed. I didn't really think too much about the sound, uh, like yeah. Andrew said. Yeah, That's it's... literally what I just said, and you were criticizing no. me for it. Yeah, well, that was uh, literally my point. Wow, all right, we've guys. got an aggressive Pause. mafia player. <laughs> this is exceptional content. <laughs> guys, you know what would be an amazing play? What? If one of the villagers, whoever it happens to be, they literally just took their card and just revealed it to everyone, just being like, okay, now you guys know I'm not the bad <laughs> oh, uh, That would be definitely <laughs> that is, cheating. We, yeah, that would ruin they'll be the, cheating. That oh, would ruin everything. We didn't even talk about this in a rule in a rule book, though. Well, so. that's just no. It's just sort oh, of accepted. You, like, don't be a dickhead and ruin the show game. Your like card, right? Yeah, I won't do that. You can lie, but you cannot show your card. Right, I won't show my card. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, one thing. I didn't like, or at least it kind of took me out of the film in a, in a really unexpected way, was when um, the mother of the biker who gets beheaded with Ruth. the... Oh, Ruth. That scene was pretty cool, actually. Can, well, I, can I describe the sure, scene? Sure, go for it. Yeah. And I'll just pick up after it. Um, so they found out the, the Malkia, Malkina essentially sent word some way to these people that um, the drug trafficker was uh, going to be in this location at this time. He, he had a piece of equipment that was necessary to move the truck. Yep. Uh, so that had all the drugs in it. So um, what he did was he camped up in a location uh, and set like a telephone wire across the road. Telephone uh, wire, just a, a steel cable, a very s- thin. Oh, uh, did I say tele? I mean yeah. to say like piano wire. Cause yeah, because that, yeah, yeah. that's the go-to one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that scene was pretty brutal because he was speeding along at over two hundred miles, mm-hmm. and he flashed his light. So because um, it was nighttime when this happened, he flashed his light. So he looked up at just the right time for it to go straight through his neck. It yeah. was brutal. He'd previously been into a motorcycle dealership and measured the height of the. Of the of the motorcycle. If I could quickly just jump on to um, that character, then I'll pass back to Asher. Yeah, yeah. I I liked that character because when we first saw him and his other group of people sort of scouting out the motorcyclists, I thought they might have been like CIA informants yeah, yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. And then it turns they out, oh shit, smart yeah, and, they're like yeah. you know part of some you know obviously. Um, nefarious group and like i thought okay this guy's cool you know he's, he's got the piano wire he's planning to like you know wait until the perfect time at night for this guy to come past he's going to flash his lights i thought okay this guy he's going to be like maybe one of the big like villains of the piece mm. that's going to threaten people yep. but then his death was so unremarkable as i've said for it all, was it was just mm. like okay he knows that these aren't actual like cops that are coming after him he's he's going to show a bit of you know smartness and starting well, to we would have thought that he'd survived yep. that yeah. exactly that's that was just goes back, back to my issue another, with all these another cartel stole the drug truck 
back yeah, after yeah. he did. It's like all the main characters, um, except for Cameron Diaz's character, they all basically die in their, their you know, an afterthought. And, and I think that's actually intentional, right? Because the whole point of this this film and, and, and the uh, uh, guy at the end who owns the bar talk is about this his own experience with the cartels, these people on the streets. Death has no meaning. Yeah. And I think that they showed that to us. I, I totally um, agree it's intentional, obviously, because that's how they wrote yeah, it. Yeah. But I, it's just for me, for a film, I need to connect to the characters. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how I okay. end up caring about the general film. And if you're just going to have, like, um, Laura's character, she's obviously, like, a big part of the counselor, who is our main character. She's a big part of his life. And we just see her kidnapped. And next time we see her, it's just her body on a garbage dump. Like, to mm-hmm. me, that's not showing respect well, to a character I'll, I'll, who's I'll, meant to be so important. I'll, I'll and talk. I know it's the theme, but still. It would have been significant to even show her and as brutal as the sound being tortured exactly that would yeah. have been um, meaningful that at least gets an emotional they, reaction yeah. out of you well i was going to talk about uh, ruth the mother of the cyclist but i'll, I'll put that on pause yeah and I'll, I'll i'll talk about the that snuff film aspect because okay. uh, brad pitt's character westray asks the counselor have you ever seen a snuff film and he goes no of course not why would i yeah have you like no i haven't um but I, you know, I know someone who has. It's kind of like harking back to like, oh my god, what's his name found on the internet? This little bit of Bob, kind of strange bit of dialogue. But what what he was talking about and what he explains is that if any one individual watches a snuff film, they are directly responsible for what happened to that person because the point of the making of the snuff film is that from a legal is to no no, no a legal this, point? I don't know no it's or just, just what, a moral this point. was what the character was saying it was just a moral point okay yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, just saying that if you if you consume this content you're uh, in some way, responsible for what happened to the person in yeah, because you're video. making a market by demand creating for it. a demand. Yeah, yeah, which is questionable, but it's, but um, it's a point of view for sure. Yeah, I understand. But, people it, but it that. was consistent for why we didn't get to see um, Laura's torturing uh, because because Michael Fassbender wasn't going to watch that. I don't think he wasn't ever going to watch that that disc that turned up. No. We didn't uh, even, but we didn't need to see him watching it. We just needed to see some scene. It didn't even have to be gratuitous. No. We could just see her like, I don't know, in chains or however people torture was, people these I days. Don't think just it, like a little I scene like that. Yep. Her being kidnapped and the, the, the non-response, you know, of, of her to, to uh, the counselor, you know, when he's waiting, doesn't know what it is, what's going on. I think that that's effective at, you know, explaining the, the horror of the situation. To me, it seemed like he wasn't taking it seriously. Like, if you're meant to be meeting someone, like somewhere, and they're not showing up, you should immediately be like, okay, I need to call in all my favors, because if this woman is, so, is supposedly so important to you, you know, you're putting your hot, entire life on the line for her, you'd be like, okay, she's not here in 10 minutes, I'm immediately calling her phone, or I'm doing whatever well, I can. He did all these things. He did no, call he in didn't. We see favors. him, like, basically just chilling at the um, thing, like, not willing to go to like the um, hotel or whatever to check his phone and, and again we're not seeing him being agitated okay, I guess I just want to see more of that because he does admit on that phone call that you know he would gladly switch places with her but his actions don't necessarily show a bit of recklessness right mm. you're literally calling the police like hey I am involved in a massive yep. drug deal and uh, my innocent fiance may have gotten caught up in it he didn't do anything like that which yep, would he actually show that, that he, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right uh, but I was talking about Ruth, the yes. mother of the biker. And you're right. That was really, you know, technically cool scene. You know, it looked really, you know, spectacular. When Wait, what scene? Head popped off oh, from the okay, piano with, wire. With her son, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. And so she uh, wakes up in jail. I found that, that so night. cheesy. That was terrible. She wakes up, looks, at, you know, looks, looks horrified, at looks at the, the picture of As if of she's having son. some spiritual, like, oh, my son. Why, why that, wouldn't you? That and, took- like, yeah, sorry, it would just be, it'd be more tragic if you see her being like freaked out, but then look at the photo of her son and be like, oh, okay, you know, my son's here. I know he's probably okay. I just had a bad dream. That would have right. been so more Instead tragic because then you have her thinking he's okay while we know that, exactly. Oh my God, now I know my son is dead because of, of some uh, uh, Southern American uh, magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, no, this really, that took me out of the film quite that a lot. That sort of thing has uh, happened before. Though people swear that that sort of thing has happened to them. Yeah, people also swear that the Earth is flat yeah. and that homeopathy works. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, <laughs> get owned, Andrew, uh, uh, <laughs> psychology student. No, 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 no. But um, people and I'm just saying that because it's um, some people have said that they yeah. they felt that their son had died at this hour and they realised okay. that he had. Okay, but I, I'm uh, just saying. So there's a little bit of. Um, yeah, yeah, romantic. No, yes, it's, yeah. it's it's a little bit spiritual. Um, but there's precedent for a scene like that because people have claimed things like that in reality. Sure, 
what I what I'm thinking it is was cheesy that it was very, out of the blue cheesy and it hadn't been established that this is the kind of world where we in. didn't care about Ruth yeah. we saw her no. once and she wakes up and she's distraught we're like okay yeah. well cool it was the same thing <laughs> yeah. with the um with the motorcyclist like when we first see him we think okay this guy's a bit of a bit of a smart ass but he likes to play people he looks cool you know he's on the motorbike he's dealing drugs he's got a dog looks after he's got a I want to be him and then he yeah. doesn't get developed at all past that like we know those like three basic things about him then he ends up dying yeah his, it's just like his he, mo- his development was when he was talking to the woman who did to ask him about his dog food you got a dog was like he was just going to pick up some dog food at this place because he has a dog uh, yeah and we found that out later and she's like oh you've got a dog normal question from a normal human being looking yeah, to make exactly. normal conversation and he like pops a blood vessel internally yeah. and this was supposed to show that he's also unhinged everyone in the drug business is unhinged yeah. it yeah. would seem uh because he he essentially starts talking about how it's in a real intense voice and he's staring at her creepy like and mm. he's like it's a diet it's real I, whenever i'm hungry i snack on a few of these mm. and then, uh, i woke up in the hospital once but i still lost 27 pounds in 30 days and she's like i and you're recommending this to me that's weird because you woke up in the hospital and then he's like i woke up in the hospital because i was licking my balls on <laughs> yeah. the road and i was hit by a truck it's like okay that whole scene was just to show that you're a total dick yeah and, and that would have been fine sorry to cut you off all the time actually that would have been fine that, if was, that was like four minutes yeah that would have been fine yeah. if that and was like was the first nothing. part of seeing him and then he developed over the course. But that was like his biggest scene. And it yeah. was yeah. nothing. He's barely yeah. humanized at all. He, he basically just exists for some very forced drama with the, the mother Ruth, you know, waking up, that very cheesy scene, and for an admittedly creative um, death scene. That was all he was there for. Uh, and I thought he had way more potential. And I, I think that, that that, you know, exchange about the dog you know, oh, no, obviously I, you know, actually have a dog taking the piss out of this woman. Could have been done way better uh, yep. because he, he does this kind of like confusing line at the end, you know, licking my balls. And someone who, you know, might, you know, 50% of people have an IQ below 100. <laughs> if one of those people had listened to that, they'd be like, I mean, my cousin licks his balls every now and then. Yeah, I thought that it doesn't would have been necessarily to drugs explain that. Um, you know, he's a dog. You know, he's just got a drug problem, right? Yeah, that's and, what and I it's thought. just kind of crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and he didn't really spell it out in a in a funny way. Mm. But again, maybe that's just his character. He's just a bit of useless, bizarre. Bit of a dick, yeah, but bizarre. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't like Ruth having this spiritual, yeah. oh my okay. God, my son is dead. Because it had not been established at all in right. the film that this is the sort of universe that we're living in. And it didn't get repeated in any I, other way. I'm willing to overlook that because I've heard of cases of that happening in the past. You know, I've read you about You are these. gullible. I'm not... Fuck. No, it's not that I'm gullible. I don't... I think it's just like a weird coincidence yeah. or it's stupid. He can suspend People his disbelief People have claimed this in the past. And that is why I was able to believe it because humans act in funny ways. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Wow. You dumb idiot. So measured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, wasn't it a point that the reason why the counselor was connected to Ruth was because he was a lawyer and he was, he was appointed somehow... by the court to yeah. uh, defend her, which is kind of a funny happenstance that her son, who he ended up, you know, this was kind of the issue, uh, who got a speeding ticket that he got him off. He basically posted his fine. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really follow that where it's making like him he died a, and this led to some issue with the cartel or something. Uh, cartel, not cartel. cartel. Yeah. Anyway. That's, that's how he got, that's how everything started going poorly. Yeah. Because he was his mother's lawyer. Uh, and he, as a favor to Ruth was like, yeah, sure. I'll get your son out of prison. And then, uh, her son, the, drug trafficker who's doing a really important thing for a 20 million dollar deal dies and of course the cartel then thinks that the lawyer is suspicious because he's a new face yeah mm. that's and that took me so long to figure out yeah it was not clear yeah uh, and that's mm. why the cartel was after him it was difficult to understand was but i eventually idea? got there was the- iq just over 100 <laughs> was <Yep>. the cartel <laughs> do you think the uh, the cartel thought that this that the counselor he got the kid out of jail so that he could then kill him was that what they were going for because why else uh, would they then go after maybe, him? Maybe yeah, everyone to let him related? get out of the jail to see yeah. where he's going, right? To let let the mouse yeah. run home. Because otherwise, I would have no idea why they would go after them. You know, because it's like of this mm. kid's death, they must have thought that he was somehow related. Mm. Yeah. But it, but it turned out that the true insider was Malkina, who was um the the girlfriend yeah. of a man who got brought up into the. I, I think what, they what, could have made a, a different. Uh, potentially more interesting film, but maybe just a different film with different criticisms to it. If they had uh, 
you know, played on less, less played on the aspect of a dialogue, uh, interesting sort of semi-pretentious uh, pseudo philosophy about about life and women and drugs and it success. It was a lot about women. Yeah, 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 it was. And if they had just instead made it kind of like a a crime drama where you actually can try and picture the the whole uh, conspiracy and the plot that's going on, because yeah. it could have been an interesting yeah. crime. Yeah, uh, there were a few which characters just didn't who, understand. There were a few characters who could have had more potential to be evil or whatever and, yeah. and if we were watching it like it was a crime sort of film perhaps we could have figured out for ourselves that it was malkina over everyone else i think that um the only character who got uh development and was interesting was um the tan dude i keep forgetting his name Raina, because at first we think he's you know like a total playboy mm -hmm. um when he's hanging out with cameron diaz's character she's you know mounting him and he's just like oh you know you're so hot and we see him like um going on about oh yeah i was with this chick and she liked another chick and you know he's basically like bragging we see him having this you know um very large lavish lifestyle mm -hmm. and then we see him like when he sh when he shared that that car sex story yeah, about yeah. her at first that felt totally out of place and i thought it was retarded but then i understood what the um filmmaker was going for because they were, they were like oh well he brought that idea up even though he brought that story up even though it's a totally random like you know story that you don't really share with people mm. it's because he you know she was on his mind and he was finding himself falling in love with her and like we, we'd seen that sort of mirrored with um the counselor's character where he loves laura and he's like okay i'm gonna do anything for her and we see Raina sort of going in that path where he's mm. like i want to focus on my empire and he, and he specifically says something along the lines of how he's afraid of falling in love with her he's mm. afraid to admit that and by the end of the film we see like like he's trying to, you know, remain calm when everyone else is fleeing. And he's like, you know, you know, Cameron Diaz, who doesn't, uh, what's her name? Malkina. He's Malkina. like, you know, I really want you to stay with me. And so his death was the only one that really like meant something to me because it's like, okay, we see this guy. He's like a drug kingpin playboy. He's actually fallen in love with someone. He's found something that actually means something to him. And that's what really annoyed me how his death was just, you know, shot in the leg, shot in the head dead people come and scavenge his body it felt like dude that was the only interesting character um the only guy who i actually at all connected with like it wasn't that much that i connected with him but mm. i was like okay i see some um valuable parts of him you know he's becoming someone who's um i guess more along the lines of someone that i would respect That's and right. then he's just out of there he had an interesting kind of uppy downy yeah. arc that you could kind of see develop and he was just entertaining like those those stories even though they were they yeah. felt totally out of place mm. they were still funny and he had a very funny you know very good delivery yeah totally totally it's, and like the the story about the, I want to eat your pussy yep. <laughs> and the car. They were just all about sex, violence and women. Yeah. But, but they, were, they were good little little tiny things and that he, the film had just been a series of random a, people telling those sorts of things. Yeah. There was a purpose in sharing the... I initially thought that the car story was so pointless and stupid. Yeah. But he shared that story because he was beginning to feel scared. Yes, because mm. didn't, he didn't understand her. Yeah. But yep. he loved her and he's like, she is kind of crazy but also yeah. smart he realized that this action she was taking was calculated yeah uh, uh he described it as <clears throat> gynecological yeah, yeah. Uh, which uh he he was he was realizing that this is this is an act of some sort uh beyond just mere sexuality uh and and he wanted an opinion from the counselor at that point mm. just just someone to say yeah that's weird or hey that's yeah. normal or something yeah and the counselor was like that's weird and i've got nothing to say <laughs> and he was like well i don't i shouldn't yeah. have told you that then what? i i mean i'll think about it myself if she's truly insane or if that was just a really hot moment one, mm. one of the film's ideas that they really tried to hit you over the head with was that the counselor was always being advised by people they always yes. simply use the words like advise yep. or guidance just, yep. which is you just opinion. you know the oh yeah. it's ir it's ironic because he's the counselor, the counselor but he counselor needs keep, people he to help asked, him. he was like what's your advice yeah like, i don't have any advice and it's like <laughs> how many people do you meet who don't have advice for you yeah oh man come on okay we've been going for about 40 minutes um uh we're sort of still giving our like all yeah. generally giving our opinions would we sort of like to move more into the ter interrogation sort well of i mean I, I could put myself out there yeah, why sure. i voted it a five uh was yeah. because Hold of on. the let's yeah. talk about and this is great because that's going to start exactly what i wanted to discuss what um explains the difference between our marks so you've marked it five You've got four, and I've put 3.5. Why do we have these differences? Uh, so five, because I think it was it had like a good amount of passable or um, high-quality stuff. I think I've already talked about certain relationships. But also the the morals of the story, the sort of the lesson that it tries to, to give us, I think it's quite interesting and well told. It's all about like guilt by association. Even if you didn't really intend for 
you know, this horrible consequence to happen. You are so closely tied to the whole scheme. You've done your part of it. You have moved on the whole conspiracy this much more, and you can be held responsible in some way uh, for for the ultimate actions, like the, the the deaths of your of a loved one, or that the Natalie Dormer's character at the end when she all she was doing was just getting you know the password of this and that and his location, and she she's talking to Malkina. And uh, she says, oh, should I worry about him? Like, you know, what's going to happen? And like, then she learns that he's going to die. He's going to die. And she's like, I didn't want anything to do with this. And it's like, well, you know, tough. You don't have anything to worry about. Take the money. She doesn't take the money. And yeah, so this whole this whole theme of... Um, and and the, the snuff film where you don't necessarily intend for these consequences to happen, but you are sufficiently tied up with um, the whole scheme that you, you are responsible. So admonishing drugs, basically, I think the lesson you could take away from this is if you buy drugs in America, you're doing something to uh, promote this sort of, these sort of horrible things happening to people. Okay. And for me, when I gave it a four out of 10 to me, like if you go below the average of a five, it's when it starts being a bad film. And to me, I just found this a bad film in general because there was way too much talking. Um, So many of the characters, especially the minor characters just came off as pure mouthpieces for the director where it's like, oh shit, we really want to get this idea across this this theme. We'll just have this, uh, this one character here just randomly start spouting it. Like so many of the conversations did not feel natural where it's like, we're going to sit down um, to discuss a drug deal. And, oh, I'm just going to philosophize about, you know, the many, you know, the meaning of life, what greed matters to us, how love affects us. It just felt so unnatural for me. Um, there was, in general, there's way too much sitting down and talking. We didn't really see the main characters getting involved in their business. It was mostly them dealing with third parties. Uh, yeah, I just didn't feel it had much to offer. But it, just because it's a, I guess, a, a probably a high budget Hollywood film, you know, given all the actors they had, there were just, it was generally well made, I suppose. You know, I can't really criticize the cinematography um, or the music, even though it wasn't memorable. So, yeah. And honestly, uh, I keep forgetting his name, Rainer. He was the one, like, if it wasn't for Rainer being that one person who I actually cared about at all and was entertaining, this probably would have been like a three out of 10, like totally boring film, especially when this was over two hours long. This did not need to be two hours, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Andrew. Yeah, uh, 3.5. Uh, there were too many pointless scenes for a story that was not unique or different to any other drug story or film that you've heard thousands of times before. Mm. Uh, the first quarter, third of the film, was uh, boring. Totally mm. boring. Uh, it only got interesting when uh, things started going poorly. The the good times, quote unquote, lasted for too long in the film. Uh, when you know things, the drug deal was looking good, but um, the pointless scenes really bothered me. There were some stupid parts, like I got mega triggered at the confession scene because uh, oh yeah, Malkina, we did talk about that. Yeah. Mal- Malkina, uh, she talks with uh, Laura, who she is interested in. Partially, potentially because of the lesbian sort of aspect, but also because she is um, curious, in my opinion, about her naivety. Mm -hmm. Uh, She Catholicism. Yeah, she is. um, She's curious. She's uh, been. She's been a psycho her whole life, Mm. uh, and and someone who she considers like maybe a little entertaining as a friend. You know, she you know gives her a bit of a smile when she's around. You know that sort of thing. But she's ultimately a toy. But maybe more important than most other people to her, uh, she gives it a go. She's like, okay, I'll I'll try confession, uh, and she goes to confession. It's a great scene. She's walking up into yeah. the aisle in her you know tight uh, leather pants yeah. and all these like. Fiddly old, fiddly old women just sitting in the pews, going yeah, like, what waiting, the waiting for their turn, and, and she just goes you know, right up to the front, sits at the front, uh, and she goes to confession, and 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 she's like, hey, uh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned, yeah. uh, <laughs> and and this triggers the priest a lot, yeah, uh, because he is also a psycho, evidently, yeah, uh, because he starts uh, like, are you even Catholic? Have you been baptized? Yeah, there's no I don't point in deal me with you. There's you no point in me dealing here. I don't, I'm, I haven't been to confession, but I don't think a Catholic priest I, would I behave that way. I think that he picked up on her being sort of disingenuous. Yeah. I think that was it. 
by okay. like because she sounds like a typical sort of Cali girl, you know, like you know, okay, I'm here, I'm just gonna say this line. She mm-hmm. just felt so like it was clear that she wasn't a Catholic, and I understand his point being like, if you're not a Catholic, then me going through the Catholic rites with you, it's gonna be pointless for me and for you. So I understand him thinking, you know, I've got people that actually come to church every week who have issues that they're you know mentally dealing with. So I didn't have an issue with that scene, at least mm. from the point I, of you know I understood why the priest acted the way he did. I'd say that the, that that priest who you might believe is a, such a small minority of actual priests uh and to have him be the one that she uh, meets is kind of strange this film um, is anti-religious uh, it's <laughs> yeah. i think it's anti-people uh, is, uh kind of but like he you know any any the average priest who you know has you know his his ducks in a row would have just gone you know would have been the better man in that situation gone through the motion yeah, would have least. and would have listened to her and told him told her uh his uh you know real thoughts on um what she's done wrong and all of this regardless of whether she's there in bad faith because him walking out just confirms to her that the church is full of shit yeah but to uh, me exactly yeah. if you really wanted to convince someone you have to take them seriously yeah, yeah. That, that scene yeah. itself felt so pointless because we see cameron diaz's character yeah, at the start absolutely. she's like you know we know that she's a bit of a trickster you know m- you know mastermind manipulator whatever and when we see her go to church it's like okay so we're getting a bit of development she seems to have a bit of guilt about what she's done you know feels inadequate with herself obviously she's trying to play cool and be like oh yeah i'm just here it'll be interesting but the idea is that she has some doubt about herself that's why she's gone to confession yeah but then we just see her remain this manipulator for the um for the rest of the film and i get the idea is that oh it's because the church treated her so badly but it still feels like a pointless scene because uh, okay she's yeah. the she's the same at the start she has one little blip where she teases um you know being a bit more you know human but then she's just stays this cool character for the, the entirety of it so mm. yeah um well, basically yeah. at the end of the day i think you andrew are the fucking mafia okay would Why you like that? to justify that because 3.5 is pretty low uh i think you could be prepared to rate this just just to sort of around what i've rated it um as having like uh, enough redeeming qualities that you would actually you know at the end of the day re- recommend it to someone because I, I don't think i would recommend anything to someone if i rate it below five but but i rated it five because i think i'd actually recommend it to someone like Ash, if I you genu- haven't watched this I film i genuinely you wouldn't recommend this film to anyone uh-huh that i i i a complete waste i also would not recommend it i think that lewis is the mafia though not mm. you because Why, i can see your opinion being legitimate uh, in the sense that I think that Asher could have the capacity to find that there were a lot of things that he liked about this film. Um, what he said to me, just and what he accused of me, was his true perspective about what he thought of the film. At least that made it up to me in my mind uh, that Asher was a villager. But why do you uh, think I'm the mafia? And I suspect mafia? Lewis because he has too much hatred in his heart. <laughs> uh, so you think I'm being over the top? Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I think um, you're being really aggressive in a lot of your speaking okay. and a lot of your opinions um he's saying he might have actually rated it a two no no he thinks i would have rated it about a six so did you say that and i just didn't hear that no 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 but that's what i think I because he's saying i'm being I too i don't hateful. think he would have rated it a two mm. i think he i think it's possible that lewis could have rated it a five or a six okay well, five, uh, I, we've briefly talked about this. That, if, I, that, if I can get a moment yeah, okay, to go defend it. myself. Yeah. Uh, you guys know. Actually, no, let's move on and vote. <laughs> you guys know that I, I am always animated in what I say. Anime. Like, look, I wrote, what, like six oh pages God, of yeah. reviews about this stuff. I have a lot to say. If I, if I ended up being the mafia, all those notes I made, like... I would have to run through them and be like, okay, what can I say here that's a different of opinion? Uh, I, that would I, have stressed you out and maybe barely, you have elevated your intensity. I barely ever refer to the notes because these are my genuine feelings. I don't need to say, okay, what's my next bit? Oh, yeah, this little thing. I could just go off the cuff because these are my genuine feelings on the film. Okay, and because it's a weird thing to say that I seemed like too aggressive. First of all, my, my main issue of being aggressive was because um, Asher seemed to be getting annoyed with me at parts. I don't I don't know who the mafia is, so I'm not sure if he's doing that to be like defensive and like bring accusations on me. But there were moments where he would challenge me being like, oh, but how can you think that this was a, a bad acting performance? Oh, and that I, sort I, of triggered me being think, like, well, this is my opinion. I, I just think didn't we're connect just, with them. I'm just, you know, we generally disagree about some things. I don't know if it's mafia playing into it because I, I don't necessarily know if that it is you, Lois. I'm just sort of entertaining Andrew's line of reasoning there. It's just because you defended the film quite a bit for me to think that you genuinely thought it was like a mediocre film at 5 out of 10. Mm-hmm. But then I think to Andrew, and I think the 3 out of 5 might be too low. and 3.5. He, he yeah, gave it 3.5. What did I say? 3, three out, out of five. 5. Sorry, um, the, the 3.5. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like maybe he chose the point 
five of his 3.5 to sort of um, throw some confusion there where it's like he thought it was just over, uh, you know, he thought it was mediocre, but he's just going to go a tiny bit below. I was mm. concerned that my pretty low rating would paint a target on me, uh, but that is my true opinion because I was extremely bothered by the pointlessness. It was a pointless film and I give it a 3.5 out of 10. Much for the same reasons that Lewis did. It was it had some acting, yeah, and um, there were a cool scene. It did here have some there. acting, didn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but it was so pointless. It was a, it was a borderline a waste of time. That's what confuses right. me because we seem to have a similar opinion. We have a very similar rating, but you're accusing me of being the mafia, and I'm not sure if that's because you think I'm sort of jumping onto your opinions. Or if you genuinely thought, like, if you are the mafia and you thought the film was, like, a 5 out of 10, so to hear me say it's a 4 out of 10, you think you can then, like, bring uh, the accusations on me. Our is not so much. Yeah, right? but that's why I'm confused that you're saying that I must be the mafia because, like, I guess it's because, like, when you hear someone who's, I guess, mimicking so many of your points, I, I guess to me, if I heard that, I wouldn't immediately think, oh, okay, they're lying because it's, it's like, I can agree with so many of their points, so they must be genuine, I'm I guess. I'm not mimicking your points. I, I, I don't mean like actually them, like trying to repeat them, but, but you know, the, like. But the main thing for me was the pointlessness uh, of the film and mm -hmm. the scenes. And that's why I'm really critical of it. Okay. Uh, well, because that totally ruined it for me. This is difficult because now yeah. I don't know who's who. Yeah. Well, I, I think we have talked about how we feel about the film. One of us has been lying or at yes. least distorting. Mm. I am pretty certain I know who the mafia is, um, and I'd be prepared to vote. I feel like I just need a few. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite prepared to yeah. vote either. Uh, and uh, mm. Lewis's point about Asher did make me a little suspicious. However, I don't want to go too crazy uh, by changing who I initially suspected, because that in itself is also crazy. It seems like I'm getting desperate. But I'm not because I'm a villager. I was and thinking villagers have to work together to kill the mafia. Yes, we do. I've Andrew. been thinking your general acting. Uh, when I think back to you being the mafia in the first episode, you seemed a bit more animated, being like, I guess, like little like um, vocal cues. You'd be like, oh, you thought that, or you know, oh, I can't believe that. So you seem a lot more restrained here. So that makes me think that you aren't the mafia it's the it's the rating itself like if you gave this like i do think that a 3.5 is low but then i think back to like it's only 0.5 below me and i can understand the boredom of some of the scenes really weighing um down on you a bit more than me so i i do think you are probably the villager and i think i do think that asher is the mafia i think that he either also thought this film was terrible or he thought it was like a genuinely good film because maybe he thought, oh, I really like the, um, like, as I said, he was pointing out so many things that he liked. He was like, whenever I'd bring up a criticism, he would defend it being like, oh, well, I understand. Like, well, yeah, I actually like the third parties being the focus. I didn't, I like the idea that they're going for greed and, you know, that sort of theme. I liked the, um, the mouthpieces, but then it was like, Andrew was also sharing. Well, to be fair, it was only one scene where Andrew was like, oh, I really like that scene. So I do think that Asher put forth too much defense of the film to justify his five out of 10 rating. I think he got a bit carried oh, away. So you think he ousted himself accidentally? I think so. I think that he thought the film was like good. I would say like maybe a seven out of 10. I No fucking way. It was a five out of 10 because I'd recommend this film to people, but um, I'd, I'd let them know that you're not going to enjoy this film unless you're a pretentious twat. Why would you recommend the film yeah. if they're not going to enjoy it? What, 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 what would you say they would enjoy of this two, two, two hour two film? Two hours, 17 minutes. Yes. Uh, of, so, which the first, of which the first third was totally unnecessary. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's totally unnecessary, but like, I see your point. Um, basically, I thought that there were like enough interesting uh, scenes that you did pay such off. as such as the uh, the Nick the Nick piece uh, uh, assassination, right, right. the death scenes, the which death lasted scenes. like a total of two minutes. Um, I really liked the the strange t stories about you know from our orange friend, um, and orange I, man bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like and I, and I and I think that it does have a really interesting message to 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 tell about um uh you know your uh, proximity to crime and um what the ultimate you know, results of that criminal underworld can be and and how responsible people on the fringes might be. Andrew, the the scenes that he pointed to, those were the minority. Like he's talking about those funny scenes it's with Rainer. because Rainer. those are the best scenes. Exactly, but they're also he's saying he would recommend the film. Those are the, those are his two points. The like some of the death scenes and Rainer being funny, which is like a minute part of the film. 
And um, what was it you were also just saying before? You don't have to. I guess you uh, can't yeah, tell so me because I'm just going to use it to about, accuse you. About the, um, oh, yes, the, the proximity things. to That's what you were saying. Prime, That's prime. such a basic sort of theme. Like, oh, this talks about how, you know, the, the idea of greed and stuff. And it's like, okay, Asher, there are probably 50 films that come out from the US, Canada, whatever, that deal with this. I don't understand why of all the films that deal with these themes, why you would choose this film to recommend to someone, especially rather than a film that probably deals with greed, even relating to like, you know, drugs and cartel and smuggling, that you would give a higher rating. Sure. I, I think it is way too obvious that you are the mafia i'd say that the quality of the film in terms of its uh like crispness the color palette the cinematography i really liked like the the beautiful shots he's reaching um, for stuff now and he's going to other acting. aspects and so i'd say that it's worth watching if you're interested in watching a cormac mccarthy uh written screenplay uh directed by ridley scott you may as well watch this film and uh i'm very prepared for people to, to come back with um either a, a 3.5 rating or a 4 uh, although one of those is a lie, but like I understand why you'd rate them around like that. Um, what about the cinematography? Did you like? Like what stood out to you? And so made the you color say, wow, palette, was... the okay. uh, green to orange sort of hue that everything had, kind of reminded me of that Breaking Bad uh, feel. All right, um, which All was right. really cool of the. Oh, yeah, but why? Why We're that probably important? at one hour, right? Um, we are just under one hour, and that's you trying up. to move away from me, accusing him because he wants to get to the voting. What was it about these I colors agree that with made your you stand Lewis, out? But you're being way aggressive. Yes, because yeah. I want to get the mafia. I agree. You th- I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm willing to take a should vote. We, I don't even. Should we vote this shit out of here? Yep. <laughs> Let's all vote. right. Okay. This is going to be fun. So we're all going to write it down here. Shit, this is hard. This one. Oh boy. Whew. I wrote that very, very easily. I have no doubt All in right. my mind. I've written down who I'm voting for. I have also written down who Shall I'm voting for. Shall we reveal to each other? For. Yep. Okay. Three, Three two, two, one. Lewis. Asher. Asher. Oh, fuck. Yep. I knew it. Yeah, I'm You're the, the motherfucking mafia. Oh, oh, yes. Grave yes. Keeper's Spy. Oh, right boy. here. Okay, dude. That Go one ahead. was so tough. Yep. I, I really... Fuck no. I would not recommend this film. <laughs> I was yes. like, what if he thinks it's three? Oh, no, God. it's a three. It's a oh, three yeah. out of five. Yep. Basically, uh... Damn, so I'm the high one on this film. Oh, man. That's yeah. hilarious. I had the, like, the... Oh, God, go ahead. So, so its redeeming qualities are kind of what I said. Yeah. That, that the themes, I think, are strong, but, but ultimately, I'm just so fucking disappointed that Ridley Scott and Cormac McCarthy, two extraordinarily talented yes. uh, people yeah, in, the, in the film and novel... Uh, 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 they just fucked this up it's somehow. It's so yeah. weak, isn't it's it? It's so weak. Did you read the book? <laughs> no, no, okay. it's not a book. So Cormac, oh, this is thought, why it's okay. unique. Cormac McCarthy write, writes novels. Um, mm-hmm. The Road is arguably the greatest uh, modern novel of all time. The Road is definitely a top 500 book. Blood Meridian, <laughs> okay. another top 500 book. <laughs> I've heard yeah. that one. No Country for Old Men, top 500 book. Also, extremely great film. But And also Ridley Scott. Mm. How many fucking great films has he done? How many terrible films has he done? Sure. But... They I'm come not, together. I'm not familiar with Ridley Scott. Over uh, Alien, Ridley Scott, right? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so he did great, and then he also did terribly. Uh, but so, oh, it's just really frustrating. Yeah. Um, I agree with all of your criticisms. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking pretentious. Oh. Um, it's it's like it's it's like a, a piece of shit gilded. Yeah. Uh, and shot beautifully. Whoa, yeah. you hated this film. Yeah. <laughs> Three out of ten. Uh, ah, yeah. maybe uh, maybe I'm getting a bit okay, uh, just right. releasing my yeah, catharsis yeah. of God, having you, you, you guys really wearing me it. down. I was like, damn, this wasn't just a bad film. It was like a really bad film. Like you guys moved me down more towards like the three out of ten uh, range. And I, I found that when I was having to defend it at five out of ten, I was finding myself kind of agreeing with what I was saying. That yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I'd recommend it as yeah. a five out of ten. Yeah. But you know, I thought I thought um you argued that very well. Yeah. I was uh I was very torn actually. It was only when I started like like genuinely like listening to your words being like oh yeah I like these like three scenes and you know the music was fine where I was like no justify this and that and it was only those last 10 minutes the, where I finally figured it and out and there was a moment when Andrew said that oh you know I really think I agree with you Ash you're probably not oh, the mafia yeah uh, and we you know and Lewis is probably the mafia and yeah. then I'm thinking oh fuck yeah now Lewis gets to speak and yeah. we can't just vote <laughs> at this point which is why I was like maybe we should vote yeah and you keep yeah. talking I'm and like, that's the annoyance because it's like vote. like when you're accused of something like obviously this is like a little game that we play but when you're accused of something you do get like sort of animated and yeah. be like no i'm gonna jump on this i'm gonna bring out every point in the deck and i was like yeah, damn it's this tough. is going to work against me because asher wants to vote andrew's leaning towards me mm. and i'll make myself seem like i'm the one who's desperate but it's like i, I am desperate i did suspect you lewis yeah uh, i did uh i thought you were being too aggressive yeah uh, i thought that you were overly focusing on things because i thought that you were focusing on the things that were really bad mm. uh i w- 
personally, I would have been surprised to have thought you rate it six. Yeah. But I admitted that there was a possibility. Yeah. But when you started to uh, target Asher quite quite vehemently, and and you brought up some points, and then Asher was he wasn't scrambling, but he was he was searching for a yeah, defense. Sure. That made me sort of um begin to lean towards your arguments. Mm. Mm. Oh, I just yanked on the cable. That it, was also, good. it also Man, sort was, of, um, it was a tough one. It though. also sort of threw me because I didn't really want to directly bring this up during the interrogation because it would feel sort of cheap. But we we did hint at the start how Asher had seen this film um, a while ago. We don't know how long ago. Mm. So it was like, okay, did he recommend this because he thinks it's a good film? Well, And my, I wasn't sure he'd recommend a terrible well, film. My, my he, father yeah. recommended this film a while ago. He said, oh, have you seen The Counselor? Oh, God. It's, it's extraordinary. And I'm oh, like, Jesus. okay. <laughs> Interesting. God I'll check it out. It, and I, yeah. Honestly, and I and I watched it, and I probably watched it in like two or three sittings. Yeah. Yeah. It yep. was just painful, but yeah. I was going to watch it anyway. I would um, not have watched this without you guys and the show. Yeah. Uh, and guys, I'm sorry at what if you. Point, at what point would you have stopped watching yeah. this film? Oh God. Um, I think I would have continued it. I feel like I, I want to say about forty, like just over halfway. I feel like it was maybe just after the counselor had started talking to West Ray, where I was getting the idea, okay, we're not actually going to see these guys who are supposedly men of action actually do anything. They're just going to, you know, fly around and talk to people. That was when I was really like, okay, I'm just losing interest with this film. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I would have stopped. Personally, I really hope that no one watched this film to then (laughs) uh, listen to our podcast. I hope that people who have seen the film, uh, you know, were like, oh, maybe I'll watch this one uh, instead of going, oh my God, they're doing this this film that uh, my dad told me yeah. was good. Maybe I should finally watch it. Uh, I'm so sorry if that was you, but um, you've, you've come along on the ride. Yeah. Uh, just a thought about how we initially vote uh, on the um, rating, rating rather, the film. Yeah. I think we shouldn't uh, be going, uh, you say it, you say it, and I say it. I think we should write it down. And then reveal it uh, because call. F- so far it can sort of adjust. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh, maybe, yeah. And so I just, just I'm gotcha. not saying that we right. have been Understood. doing it, but just to make yep. sure that there's, yeah, I think that's you know, fair because seems, no concern. Of otherwise, that. you might artificially inflate your score. Where you're like, oh, well, okay, if I vote at seven, then what are they going to think compared right. to right. That's right. a good point. That's that's neither here nor there. Uh, essentially, we at Cinemafia uh, would recommend that you do not watch The Counselor. Yes. Yep. Uh, you... Maybe maybe find like a YouTube highlight reel of all of oh, Rainer's totally. parts. That's about it. Or um, look at the death scenes. They're pretty cool. Yep. If you, I mean, I mean, cool. I mean, I don't. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's really cheesy. Just like gory sort of blood yeah. stuff. I mean, honestly, I mean, and if someone went on the Wikipedia page to like get a brief overview of the plot, they would probably understand the film better than we did, yeah. having watched it. They don't understand the criminal enterprise. Yeah, at least. like we because we never saw anyone really getting involved, like directly, like you know, sitting down and going through stuff. It was like, okay, I'm trying, I'm struggling to understand what your role it, is. It took a long time is. for me to piece things together. A yep. really long time. Yeah, that always happens with like sort of like international sort of like smuggling movies like this, where yeah. there are so many parties involved. Mm. Um, anyways, yeah. So we've we've done our analysis. Uh, we voted off the mafia. He's off Ooh. the island. That's two and weeks that was, in a that, row. that was a really close one, though. Uh, yeah, I think I, I did better feel, than, than last time. Bad, yeah. Certainly. Thank you for listening to this episode of Cinemafia. Uh, next week, we will be reviewing Phantom of the Paradise. So, please give that a watch. 1974 film, uh, drama, thriller, fantasy. Give it a go. That'll be next week. Thanks. See you then.